In this video, we're going to write a program that uses three user-defined functions. Now, here's a little exercise that you can do at this point if you want to. Just pause the video after I've described it. So we need a program which asks the user to enter a password. If they enter the correct password, whatever we've decided that is, it's going to print access granted. Otherwise, it's going to print access denied. So if you want an exercise, you can pause the video and try to write that program. At this stage, you should be able to write that program, I think. And if you can't, you probably want to consider increasing the amount of practice you're doing at this stage. So let's go ahead and write that program. In fact, I'm going to start by printing a greeting. Let's say print welcome. No unauthorized users. Okay, now I'm going to create somewhere, maybe at the top, a constant which will store the correct password. Let's make that hello, which of course is a, a terrible password that you should never use. Then we'll get the password from the user. So let's say password lowercase now equals input enter your password. Let's have a space and a sort of prompt character. Then we'll check it. So if password equals password, then print access granted. Else print access denied. Let's run it and see if it works. Enter your password. Access denied. Enter your password. Hello. Okay, that's working. Now, with a small program like this, you don't need to define your own functions. It's just not worth the effort and actually would make it more complicated. But let's do it anyway, because for a larger program, you definitely need to be defining functions. Breaking your code down into functions makes it much easier to maintain and to fix and to understand. So we'll start practicing that with this really small program here. How can we break this down into functions? Well, one way we could do it is we could have a greeting function that does this bit, and we could have a password checking function that does this bit. So let's do that. We'll have a function here, let's call it def greeting, and I have the round brackets and a colon, and that just displays the greeting to the user. Now we've got a bit that checks the password, let's say def check underscore password, round brackets, colon, and I have to indent this with a tab to say that this is the body of this function. What about this constant up here? Well, this will actually work if I just leave the constant there. So one possibility is I could just leave it there. Another possibility is I could move it into this function. It doesn't really matter which one of those I choose. So at the moment, this will do nothing if I run it. To make it run, I've got to call the functions. So let's say greeting. That's the first thing we do. And then we do check underscore password. With round brackets on the end there. And let's now try that. So that now works. Now this is okay, being as it's a really small program, but with a bigger program, if you have lots of functions, it can become quite hard to see where the program actually starts. So a convention that we typically follow in Python is we have a function called main, which is the entry point of the program. That is, it's the thing that kicks the whole program off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these in a function called main. So let's just go to the top here and say def main. There's nothing special about the word main. It's just a common convention. We need round brackets and a colon. And then I indent these with a tab to say that they're part of this function. And of course, my tab is still being automatically translated into four spaces. 
Now again, if I run this, it's going to do nothing. What I have to do is call main to start the whole thing off. So right at the bottom here, I'm going to call main like this. That makes the main function run, and then that will run the greeting function. It will call the greeting function. So it does this. And when that's finished, it will then call check password, which does this. Let's try that. And we can see that it works just as before. But we've got a much more structured program, which if we wanted to make it bigger, add a lot more code into it, would have a much better chance of maintaining a clear, understandable structure now that it's broken down into separate functions than if we just put everything on one page. So try this out for yourself. If you are confused by it at the moment, I think you'll find that if you type it out and get it working, it will seem less confusing after that. And if you're feeling confident, you can make up your own program with multiple functions. Don't forget to create a main function, which then calls your other functions, and you've got to run main, you have to call main, right at the bottom of your program there. You've been watching a free sample from my Python and Machine Learning for Complete Beginners course. I'm uploading enough videos from the start of the course to get you started with Python and machine learning. The full course is absolutely massive. If you're interested in it, please click the link in the description. The complete course covers not only basic Python, but also some fairly advanced Python, even some desktop programming stuff, and then goes on to machine learning and artificial intelligence. Until next time, happy coding.